Hello friends, I am Ayantika and in this video I am going to discuss about a xanthophyte um, a yellowish green algae Vogeria species where I will be discussing the thallus structure, the reproductive strategies that is vegetative or sexual sexual reproduction and the life cycle of Vogeria species and also the ecological importance of Vogeria species. Overview of Vogeria. Now we begin the overview with the taxonomic position because that is quite important. Earlier Vogeria was placed under Chlorophyce, but now uh, due to several reasons it is now placed under Xanthophyce. So, uh, what are the reasons the, that um, uh, Vocaria is placed under class Xanthophyce? The first reason is that uh, the Chlorophyce, class Chlorophyce contain, all the algae contain uh, chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B uh, pigments. But uh, in Vocaria we find chlorophyll A and chlorophyll E and some carotenoids. Chlorophyll P is absent. So that is why it is not placed in Chlorophyce, rather it is placed in Xanthophyce along with uh, other Xanthophytes which usually contain Chlorophyll A and Chlorophyll E. Second reason is that the reserved food matter. We know uh, earlier we have studied various Chlorophyce algae and we have seen that uh, Chlorophyce it belongs, it contains uh, starch as a reserved food matter. But like the other member of the Xanthophyce, this Vocaria have oil droplets as reserve food matter. Also, the third reason is that their cell uh, structure is siphonaceous, which is quite uncommon in the uh, Chlorophyce. And also, the cell, it contain pectin. Uh, the cell wall contains pectin. So, all this reason, it is now placed under Z class Xanthophyce and order Vaucarealis. Uh, the order uh, Vaucarealis, all the uh, algae, they are mostly, uh, they have a siphonaceous or a cellular body where a large number of nucleus is present but the protoplast, it is unable to form septation and uh, the wall formation is not found. So, this is very, quite common in order Vaucarealis. Now, family Vaucariaceae, it contain only single genus Vaucaria. Now, uh, here uh, this is the taxonomic position of uh, Vaucaria and in er every question whether they are, uh, you are asked to write the thallus structure or reproductive, um, describe the reproductive structure or reproduction or life cycle, you should always be mentioning the taxonomic position. Now, in uh, globally, we find 54 species of Vaucaria, but in India, we are finding only 19 uh, species. This main reason is that it usually it is quite abundant in the, um, in the very temperate or cold region. So, uh, this, these are mostly abundant in the temperate region of the world and these are the name of the Indian species and its habit. What is its habit? It is, uh, it is mostly terrestrial but it is sometime, uh, it is mostly, it's not terrestrial, sorry, it is mostly uh, aquatic but some terrestrial species can also be found and some amphibian species can also be found. So, this is, this is the terrestrial species and this is the amphibian species. So, habit is that it is mostly fresh water and some marine, some amphibian, some terrestrial species are also found. See, uh, majority of the species are terrestrial and uh, freshwater aquatics that is and marine species, Vocaria philoboloides. Some, uh, only one species is found in extreme cold that is growing on the snow that is Vocaria jonesi. So, about the ecological importance and economic importance of course. The most important ecological importance is that of kleptoplasty. 
this uh, kleptoplasty in vocaria litoria this unique feature has been found that uh, this uh, nudie branch we know that nudie branch are the sea slugs they are very colorful and very uh, pleasant sight to see and so this uh, this species of nudie branch it what it does is that it consumes the vocaria vocaria litoria species but uh, partially digests it that is it only digests other part but leaves up for the chloroplast and that chloroplast that is obtained from the vocaria it continue to photosynthesize and provide um, uh, food for the uh, nudie branch or the sea marine sea slug so this phenomena of uh, uh, of uh, consuming the vocaria and uh, digesting all other part except the uh, chloroplast and the chloroplast continues to photosynthesize and provide food it is called the kleptoplasty it is a characteristic feature found only between this is this uh, type of uh, in interaction uh, found only between vocaria and nudie branch also other species uh, especially this rotifers this species of rotifer proalis it is also uh, found to consume the vocaria and store the vocaria as a whole in gall like structures so uh, these are the two ecological function and economically is that by vocaria it is uh, it is consumed uh, in uh, various type of japanese dishes and we know that the people of southeast asia they consume various type of marine macro algae as well as micro algae so uh, vocaria is also part of their diet apart from food vocaria is also used as a bio fertilizer and also it helps in the stabilization of mud we know that a uh, vocaria it it grows as a um, slippery the um, uh, very soft layer over the surface of the uh, damp uh, soil and that is why it is also called felt al uh, felt uh, algae and uh, so uh, this um, uh, this entire formation of a uh, thin mat of uh, algae of vocaria on damp soil it helps in stabilization of mud so uh, that is also another ecological importance now we come to the thallus structure now uh, the thallus it is uh, it is a xanthophyte so it will be naturally it will be yellowish sorry it will be yellowish green in color all the chlorophytes they have a grass green color but as it is a xanthophyte so it is got a yellow green color and it forms a thick layer over the damp soil and the thallus it is uh, in aquatic species it it occurs under water or maybe uh, or half submerged or sometime exposed so thallus is aerial and we observe branching branching is irregular type of branching and if we uh, observe with a hand lens we will see that we are finding uh, all the thallus the they are entangled and but the thallus is um, siphonaceous here we see this diagram the thallus is siphon like siphonaceous and it is branched and we do not see any septation so it is a septate cnocytic which means that uh, the thallus will have multiple nuclei in a, a, and it is a cellular that is it will not contain septations and uh, exception is there the vocaria pseudohemata we have certain uh, septations in uh, um, pseudohemata regular septations are found otherwise other species of vocaria do not have septation septation that is the uh, formation of cross wall uh, this uh, formation of cross wall it occurs only at the uh, when there is a injury only when there is an injury or at the time of formation of reproductive organ so uh, this is how the thallus looks and note that uh, they have an outer uh, they have a cell wall cell wall is two layered and uh, it is a uh, it is outer um, uh, pectin and inner cellulose so and 
next to the plasma membrane uh, next to the cell wall is a plasma membrane and um, there is a layer of cytoplasm and the outer layer of the cytoplasm this layer it will contain the chloroplast and this inner layer will contain the inner layer will contain here we see that the inner layer it contains the nucleus and they have a central vacuole here we see this is the central vacuole region so this entire siphonaceous structure as it does not have any cross wall this cross wall so uh, if there is a mechanical injury then uh, the, there will be much loss of protoplasm for that in case of mechanical injury very rapidly uh, wall is formed for example Mm, uh, this is a, 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 a siphonaceous filament and if a break if a, a break occurs say for example the, here a break occurs then uh, there will be a formation of septation in this region and also one thing is that the here in this walk area uh, the growth it is limited to the apical region and here we see this is the female reproductive organ and this one is the male reproductive organ so this is the internal structure here we see it is a it is a cross section of the internal structure and we see this is a transverse section and this is the uh, cell wall this layer it is two layered outer pectin and inner cellulose then uh, in the out, uh, then we have the plasma membrane and a thin layer of uh, cytoplasm this is the layer of cytoplasm and this is the central vacuole and this is the tonoplast so in the cytoplasm we have this outer layer this outer layer of uh, chromatophore and the and the inner layer that that is here we see these this layer that it contains the nucleus so outer layer of chromatophore and inner layer of nucleus in the cytoplasm and in the center of the cytoplasm they have a cell sap and the chromatophore about the chromatophore the chromatophore can be oval or ellipsoidal but they contain a pigment as chlorophyll a and chlorophyll b sorry chlorophyll e and chlorophyll a not b uh, and carotene and certain xanthophyll however uh, this uh, siphonin and siphonoxanthin they are absent in vocaria and uh, apart from the chromatophore apart from the nucleus they also have uh, fat as a reserve food matter one thing that is characteristic in and um, this uh, in this uh, cytoplasm is that they have a streaming motion uh, along the longitudinal section uh, this uh, this is a siphon and this is the uh, this is the central uh, vacuole so uh, this is the central vacuole and so cytoplasmic streaming is observed in the longitudinal direction and uh, this streaming is responsible uh, yeah, due to the effectin which is a cytoplasmic fibril effectin and myosin they are the cytoplasmic fibril that help in the streaming movement and they help in the movement of the chromatophore and the nucleus along the longitudinal section so this was how the thallus internal structure will look but one thing is that this uh, outer layer of chromatophore and the inner layer of nucleus it alters during the formation of juice so about the reproduction now in the vocaria three type of reproduction are found one uh, first is the very common method that is fragmentation it is a vegetative method and among the after um, frag fragmentation is only vegetative method then we have the asexual method and asexual reproduction it occurs by formation of three type of spores first is the juice spore second is the aplanospore 
third is the echinate now all these three type of spores they are produced according to different climatic condition induced climatic condition or species for example the juice spores they are very common method in the aquatic species and common method uh, only uh, to the terrestrial species when they, the land is flooded but on the other hand a planospore it is a very common method in terrestrial species that is a land species and it occurs in the aquatic species a planospore only when there is uh, there is certain temporary drought and when both the land and the aquatic species they are subjected to tremendous amount of drought then only the cyst is formed so we see that in asexual reproduction three type of spores are produced according to different type of species whether it is aquatic or terrestrial also if there is a special condition so first we will discuss about the juice spore the juice spore in uh, uh, in this uh, uh, walk area it is a very good characteristic uh, because it is it is con it is called syn juice spore or a compound juice spore why because in most of the algal species we see that juice spore uh, is a, contains a single nucleus one or a pair of uh, flagella and it is uh, very small but here in uh, the juice spore of walk area here this one this one this one this uh, this one we see uh, that uh, this uh, juice spore has con it's containing very many nuclei not a single nuclei but many nuclei and many uh, pair of um, flagella so uh, it can be according to some school of thought that it is formed because uh, the spore, juice sporangium the, uh, the the protoplasm of the juice sporangium it was unable to uh, segment into separate juice spore that is why this compound juice spore is formed so th this is uh, why the juice spore of walk area is considered as a compound juice spore or syn juice spore so uh, this uh, syn juice spore it is uh, it is multi nucleate and it is multi flagellate it is quite large in size as compared to the other species or uh, the genus of uh, algae it is quite large in size and it is yellowish green and ovoid in shape now it is formed in a um, in a uh, in a cell that is called the juice sporangium so this one is the juice sporangium where the juice spore is formed and the juice sporangium is just the terminal portion of any lateral branch uh, walk area in walk area the lateral branch that is a branch that is developed from the uh, main branch from the main branch a lateral branch develops and the terminal region of the lateral branch it accumulates huge amount of oil droplets or reserve food and nucleus and uh, dense cytoplasm and it gets swollen and then when all this entire process has been done the air uh, there is a septa formation and this septa formation this uh, this septa formation here it separates the terminal juice sporangium from the rest part of the siphon or the thallus and this uh, club shaped juice sporangium it later um, forms the uh, initial juice spore this is the initial juice spore this one juice spore initial where we see that the entire surface is uh, covered with a uh, with um, with pairs of pair of flagella one is much smaller and one is m uh, bigger and this pair flagella they are attached to um, they are attached to a vesicle here they are attached to a vesicle uh, this is diagram is quite uh, quite clear here we see that a pair of flagella is connected with vesicle and that vesicle is connected with centriole and that centriole is uh, connected with nucleus so this pyriform or pure shaped structure it is the nucleus 
and uh, so uh, from uh, this is the incipient this is the incipient stage of uh, zoospore spore and when the juice spore is matures it takes this form this structure this is the matured form of juice spore that is liberated so in mature form there is one thing that the nucleus is present in the uh, peripheral region and the chromatophores these are the chromatophores these are the chromatophores you see circular structures so the chromophores or the chromatophore they are present in the inner region and a vacuole appear usually uh, in the juice sporangium the protoplasm there is no vacuole but when um, from uh, as the uh, protoplast of the juice sporangium it uh, matures into initial juice spore then into mm, the mature juice spore a certain amount of um, vacuole is observed and also there is another change second change is that the chromatophore that were earlier in the peripheral region it um, it uh, it uh, shifts its position with the nucleus it uh, it re forms an inner layer or the central layer and the nucleus which were in the central layer now transfer to the peripheral layer so this is um, this is how the zoo uh, spore look another thing that very very important is that uh, uh, the sin juice spore why uh, it is uh, the juice spore is called sin juice spore or what is uh, sin juice spore short questions can come like this so be uh, very uh, this is a very important topic uh, that is a sin juice spores uh, how the work area juice spore is different from rest of so uh, the juice spore uh, once it is matured then uh, the in uh, the upper region that is the upper region of the sporangium the uh, if this is the club shaped uh, sporangium and this is the septation septation so uh, the upper region of the sporangium the wall it gelatinizes and the juice spore is le liberated and uh, it is usually liberated in the early morning in the morning period and uh, after liberation it swims for uh, 5 to 15 minutes then it uh, become very sluggish they it um, stops its motion comes to rest and the flagella it, um, it it becomes motionless it is withdrawn or it vanishes and then uh, the juice spore what it does is that it rounds off and it develops uh, it uh, uh, ensheets itself on a um, around um, uh, uh, cellulosic wall is formed around it it ensheets in the cellulosic wall and after a period of rest uh, tubular outgrowth is found and these tubular outgrowth they are in bidirectional two uh, tubular outgrowth is formed and each of the tubules they are sinusitic and they are colorless uh, and uh, one of it develops into an hold first another develops into the body so uh, bo uh, thallus body so we see that the zoo spore of after liberation swim then comes to rest then it uh, germinates to a um, uh, to a thallus so this is this is the entire process of germination that is the zoo spore zoo spore to the period of rest then we see the germination of tubular structure two uh, tubules are developed sorry uh, two tubules are developed and then this one this one it is the final stage that is uh, e is the final stage how it forms a then we have the aplanospore aplanospore is generally uh, found in the uh, in the terrestrial species naturally because we know that uh, juice spot they have flagella so they were able to uh, swim in water so but aplanospore they are generally found in the uh, terrestrial species this type of spore that is aplanospore is essential in the terrestrial species because uh, it won't ha uh, have much water so a uh, certain type of spore that won't be requiring uh, to swim would be uh, produced by the terrestrial species so generally aplanospore uh, are produced in the terrestrial species or aquatic species when there is drought condition 
and uh, the earlier uh, juice pour i forgot to mention juice pour are produced only under a uh, special condition like for example uh, when converted to dark area or there is low amount of nutrient in the area at that type of condition juice spores are uh, produced but aplanospore they are triggered mostly by dark condition and um, uh, also certain amount of drought and also if the aquatic aquatic species they are converted from the uh, uh, running water to still water so this is the diagram of an aplanospore here we see uh, aplanospore is actually uh, circular uh, region and this is the germinating aplanospore like structure so uh, so uh, just like the juice spore or uh, the any central uh, any central uh, siphon it develops uh, it develops a lateral uh, branch and that lateral branch they they uh, they swell and a septation is formed the uh, the swelling the uh, swelling is um, uh, formed and uh, the all the chromatophore the uh, reserve matter that is the oil droplet nucleus they accumulate and uh, uh, then only the septation is formed and actually this is not a very circular thing it is a very club shaped structure this is a club shaped structure I should be rubbing this one. So uh, this uh, club shaped structure is formed and hmm, so uh, this uh, after the club shaped structure is formed uh, the, the protoplasm uh, it retracts from the cell wall it, uh, it turns round and uh, gradually mature to form an aplanospore. So they are also developed from the lateral branches and sometime it happens that these aplanospore that is uh, developed here the aplanospore uh, this is the aplanospore formed and this aplanospore they are liberated by the gelatinization of the wall and then once they fall to the ground they start germinating this is how the germination occur but second thing what that happens is that this is the first process another process ha happens that the entire uh, protoplast of this uh, aplanospore it is converted into um, it is divided into mini uh, mini structures and each of this uh, mini structure uh, they are liberated by a very small aperture say for example an aperture here an aperture and this mini amoeboid mass of a plan mini aplanospore they are liberated through this pore they are liberated and once liberated they they do not germinate uh, after just after liberation for certain period of time these amoeboid mass they move by amoeboid move then only these mini aplanospore do germinate they germinate into another new plant and the method of germination of aplanospore mini aplanospore and the juice spore that is how the tubular outgrowth is formed they are same that is two tubular outgrowth are formed one is colorless another is green the green color they form the aerial branches and the colorless they branch further to form the hapteron or rhizoid so uh, this is the second process that is uh, aplanospore mini aplanos uh, micro aplanospore another process that is the whole aplanosporangia that entire aplanosporangia germinate to form a new plant but this mini aplanospore and the aplanosporangia sporangia directly uh, germinating into a new thallus these are rare and aplanospore is quite common 
then we come to the echinid hypnospore or cyst these are the same name when both the terrestrial and aquatic species they have suffered they suffer immense desiccation then what happens is that the entire here we see that the entire uh, siphon it is divided into a small region and uh, in this region they are they contain oil droplets chromatophore and nucleus and they are rich in oil droplets and this entire region is covered by thick gelatinous wall so entire uh, siphon is converted into small segments thick walled segment containing high amount of reserve food matter and they uh, remain dormant during period of drought and on return of this uh, favorable condition each of these segment develop into a new thallus so each of this segment they are called echinid or hypnospore or cyst so um and this echinate here we, we see that uh, this echinate uh, in this uh, stage of formation of echinate they represent another algae called the gongrosira and so this stage is also called gongrosira stage and this go what is gongrosira stage is also a very common in uh, short questions so these are the species where uh, echinate are found so the sexual reproduction it is oogamous which means that the sex uh, gametes the gametes they are of physically and physiologically they are different they are different in their size shape and also physiology so such type of reproduction where the gametes are of unequal shape size and uh, physiology they are oogamous type of reproduction and this type of uh, that is sexual reproduction they are very uh, rare in the flowing water species which means that they occur uh, mostly in uh, still water or uh, in terrestrial species they occur mostly in the terrestrial species and fresh water species when the water is very still so uh vocaria uh, has many species and some of them are monoecious which means that both the sex organ they are born on the same plant and they can be also dioecious so these are the species which are dioecious and these are the species which are monoecious when uh, they are monoecious that is the uh, sex organ will be very close enough this is the picture this one where we see that this is the hook shaped uh, male uh, gametangia this is the anthridium that is the anthridium and this is the ugonium here we see and so we see that the anthridium and ugonium they are found to be growing um, side by side uh, and in some species the anthridium the anthridium which is either hook shaped or straight so in some species anthridium is flanked by several ugonium uh, several one, more than one type one ugonium or they can be they can be have they can have just a single pair of anthridium or ugonium so uh, this is the example which i have drawn it is uh, it belongs to vocaria bilateralis where single anthridium is flaked by 2 to 6 ugonium 2 to 6 ugonium and this anthridium and ugonium all the male and the female gametangia they can be sessile or they can be stalked and now we going going to discuss about the anthridium uh, the anthridium is cylindrical we see it is cylindrical it is slender and it is tubular or curved it is it can be tubular or it can be curved and generally it is colorless but uh, it can be also green in color depending upon species and so this anthridia this hooked uh, structure they ultimately mature to form uh, uh, the sperms which are uh, spindle shaped structure the sperms here we see uh, c is the in initial anthridium 
and here we see that uh, sperms are forming here and this is the mature structure of sperm after uh, after they are liberated this is the sperm so the anthridium uh, it 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 uh, starts as a uh, lateral outgrowth uh, from the siphon say for example this is a this is a this is a siphon and a lateral outgrowth it uh, starts as a lateral outgrowth then gradually it increases in length and then it turns hook like structure and gradually it develops into a anthridium once anthridium matures it forms this palm like structure so uh, um, this palm like structure they are liberated uh, by the gelatinization of the uh, the of the wall so one thing i forgot to mention in the last slide that the sperm they had two lateral inserted flagella one is uh, much smaller that is directed in the forward direction and the larger one larger one is directed in the backward direction and so they swim to the uh, anthridium uh, sorry sw swim to the ugonium ugonium is the female reproductive uh, gametentria and it is a uh, spherical and ovoid it can be sessile or it can be stalked and but it is multi nucleate so uh, this is this is the uh, this is the anthridium that is formed a hook like structure and at the base of the anthridium we see uh, that uh, colorless multi nucleate ma um, uh, mass of cytoplasm is found that is generally called the wonder plasm and that uh, colorless mass of cytoplasm occurring near the uh, anthridial initial or the male gametangial initial it gradually enlarges and um, as it enlarges chromatophores travel to that enlarged portion also so does the nucleus thus uh, this enlarged portion this is the um, see uh, this is the a where uh, the hook like structure is forming and the the chromatophores this circular structure they are emerging and here we see that they have all emerged and then a septa is formed here and by the time septa is formed here and ugonium matures uh, this uh, sperm liberated in the mucilaginous mass from the anthridium this one here we see in this picture so uh, here we see that uh, wonder plasm accum uh, it um, forms an initial and gradually chromatophore and nuclei migrate to the region and a septa is formed and it gradually matures so this is how the ugonium is formed and anthridium and ugonium they usually they either mature at the same time or they mature within the time of few minutes uh, and they open uh, at the same time or they open um, uh, uh, the male gametangia for open earlier to the female or the female open earlier to the male and that um, difference of opening uh, time of the male and female gametangia it can vary from few minutes to even hours when it occurs um, uh, this type of uh, difference uh, in the time of opening of gametangia occur this is mainly occurs due to uh, prevention uh, to just to prevent self fertilization now we come to uh, the fertilization uh, of uh, of uh, the vocaria so uh, the the sex organs they these are the sex organs this is the uh, ugonium this is the de ugonium and this is the antridium so here we see a dehiscence is found so as the ugonium matures it develops a receptive spot uh, which uh, at uh, the point of receptive spot the uh, the wall it dehisces and so this is a receptive spot and from the receptive spot uh, the um, all the sperm that is liberated uh, from the anthridium uh, the one of the sperm enters and it fertilizes so what happens is that the male the dehisced anthridium 
uh, it uh, actually by the gelatinization of the wall and 3D uh, the sperms are released and by the gelatinization of the wall of the ugonia at the receptive spot here uh, and the sperm enter but uh, this uh, entire process the once the sperm enter uh, the it sperm fuses but uh, the nuclear fusion does not occur uh, uh, until the male nuclei it reaches the it enlarges itself and reaches the size of the female usually the uh, male nuclei is much smaller in size and Mm, uh, once it uh, attains the it enlarges itself inside the ugonium and it uh, once inside the ugonium it enlarges and once it enlarges then only the nuclear fusion between the male and the female nuclei occur so once this nuclear fusion is done so uh, this uh, diploid uh, zygote like structure here it is formed here we see uh, the ugonium and this is this is how the sperms they uh, they congregate around the uh, around the egg and so after fertilization the zygote it is retained within the ugonium so after the fertilization zygote it is retained in the ugonium and the ugonium uh, it forms an aperture uh, all the aperture that is for earlier formed it is closed and the ugonium thus it is in a compact region then and the zygote it uh, itself secretes uh, three to four layered wall zygote which is deployed uh, stage now it develops wall round it and it uh, it is retained inside the ugonium and uh, once the layered wall is formed it is now called a oospore so this oospore it uh, after a period of rest it usually a uh, period of rest is accompanied by change in color uh, from uh, greenish to reddish to brownish and uh, as the oospore it rests uh, the um, ugonial wall it is it uh, desiccates and it can also be damaged and by the decay of the ugonial wall the oospore is liberated once liberated uh, if there is a, a condition that are conductive for the growth of the ugonia for the germination of the ugonia it germinates otherwise it undergoes a period of rest so when it germinates again uh, two um, uh, two uh, tubular outgrowth is seen one that reaches the uh, uh, the longitudinally it reaches up uh, vertically it uh, goes upper re, uh, in the upper side and that is uh, green color and that goes uh, in the downward direction this one that is colorless so this two opposite tubular outgrowth is formed from the oospore so the oospore the outer wall of the oospore is very thick and uh, this uh, tubular outgrowth it is formed by gelatinization of the outer wall and the inner walls the inner walls they uh, they form the tubular outgrowth so this is how it looks and so uh, this is the um, oospore how it looks uh, after uh, after the th uh, the tubular outgrowth is formed and this is pretty much how the germination of the oospore uh, is uh, done now we will come to the life cycle so here we see the life cycle the life cycle is a haplontic life cycle that is majority part of the um, uh, period of the life cycle it is a haploid that is a end plant and uh, the major asexual reproduction methods are the juice spore that is mostly found in the aquatic and um, flooded terrestrial plant uh, vocaria species when it the terrestrial habitat is flooded and the planospore that are found in the mostly terrestrial species and when the aquatic species it um, uh, it uh, converts from the flowing uh, water to the still water condition or drought or the hypnospore when both the species terrestrial as well as aquatic they are subjected to 
drought like condition so these are the three asexual method uh, vegetatively they reproduce by fragmentation and uh, when uh, the sexual reproduction occur it occurs by oogamy where and thridia and ugonia it produces the sperm and the egg and on uh, fertility on uh, fusion of these two that is a sperm and egg the diploid condition zygote which undergoes a period of rest and oospore uh, undergo uh, uh, one thing i forgot to tell you when uh, during the development of the oospore uh, meiosis is formed that is a reduction division and so the oospore uh, the the oospore the oospore oh here it is written uh, so this is the germinating oospore sorry this one uh, so the oospore uh, in this stage uh, uh, from the oospore to the germinating oospore meiosis occurs that is the reduction division so uh, the zygote and the oospore they are the diploid structure on the other hand when the oospore start to germinate it undergo meiosis and all the nucleus it is converted from diploid to haploid so here this is a haplontic life cycle when majority portion is per plant is haploid only two stage that is a zygote and the oospore is diploid and meiosis is uh, always a zygotic or so that was all about phocaria the um, uh, thallus structure reproduction life cycle economic importance and if you want me to make any other uh, um, xanthophyce algae video do write it in the comment section also write in the comment section how you like this video or whatever improvements i want to make uh, you want me to make and if you like this video do hit the like button do share it with your friends and please do subscribe because your subscription it will encourage me uh, to make more such videos thanks for watching this video